Okay, let's uh, skip ahead to where they go back to Emma, because then they get into a little bit of a good conversation about no tax on tips. We are back, folks, and we are going to wrap up the free part of this fun, this program, and head into the fun half. Hope you enjoyed that conversation with David Dayan and Sam. Um, I heard a little bit of it, but uh, wow, you know, Emma, not um, listening. <laughs> the economic piece, particularly the antitrust. Um, and keeping on Lena Khan is going to be one of the things that we need to push the Harris campaign to stick to, in, including Gaza policy. I think these are the two pressure points here, um, continuing down and, this like anti and the whole anti-immigration thing, the trust path, as well as, of course, changing course on Gaza. So I'm glad that uh, Sam was able to grab uh, David before he headed to the DNC, so they could have that discussion. Um, by the way, this uh, program relies on your support. So uh, if you would like to support us, if you want to see this show continue for years to come to give you this kind of coverage, you can go to jointhemajorityreport.com and become a member where you can IM the show. We read your IMs on air. Um, wow, they read your uh, chats. IMs like this, Super Seeger. Sam is not beating the boomer do allegations job with that Zoom background snafu. He doesn't seem to know how to turn off that feature, it, it appears. Uh, yeah, there's been about three instances where he's pretty much every time he's re uh, <laughs> recorded uh, at his own location through Zoom, he has, the, if he if he does a thumbs up, they'll get a little thumb up bubble that comes yes. up, which is nice. and. You know, I think we just have to accept it that Sam might have fireworks going on behind him <laughs> through the miracle of AI, which is going to change all of our lives. And you could just get a little taste there. Right. Oh, my gosh. It's the like value add. It's, it's like crazy. It's like seeing Michelangelo paint right in front of me when you uh, see how AI is, is changing Zoom calls. Hurry, um, uh, tech uh, officers, please invest billions of dollars into this technology. <laughs> that's apparently falling off a cliff a little bit. Well, that's something to watch. Who could have foresaw that? Um, teacher Dan says, explain how not taxing a low wage, uh, wait staff tips doesn't help them again. It's not more money in their uh, pockets. Um, teacher Dan, uh, I, ha I didn't hear how Sam and David were talking, um, about it, but th I think the, the point is not that it just, it doesn't help them. It's just that it's, it's probably bad policy. I can explain how it won't help them. Um, what if for instance, the earned income tax credit policy, uh, doesn't, uh, judges that as pure income and all of a sudden moves them out of a more expanded EITC uh, credit, which puts them back at zero. Ooh. So yeah, very easily it could do that. Um, uh, the better she's apparently rolling out like income uh, requirements for this where she's saying that like the no tax on tips thing would be if you earn under 75k i still don't like that as much as say fighting uh for eliminating the sub minimum wage for tipped workers mm -hmm. that's a policy where that helps everybody um and then also doesn't create some of these unnecessary carve outs where th there could be loopholes exploited by maybe categorizing something as tipped work that isn't tipped work, for example. Exactly. The uh, frame Every also... Every step of um, the way, raises... your employer is going to try to pay you less, justifying it by saying, oh, no, tips. Sub-minimum wage, you get tips, though. For American workers should not be coming from what they pay into the uh, government. Which was my whole now, point I'm... the other day. was like, yo, I, I don't care. Like... That like, oh, some employers are supposed to make up the difference. They're going to find ways to exploit it, which is why you need to get rid of that law. There's no reason to keep it there. There's no reason to ever argue to not change subminimum wage unless you are anti-worker, you know, and you're pro-corporate. That's it. Fine, gender. And I, I truly believe trying to like mix it in with and saying, oh, but no, like the, raising the minimum wage is the real issue. Yeah, it is. But like both, you know, <laughs> both. Duh, both. Like, why would it be one? Generally, with, um, uh, say, incentivizing labor income over passive income, which is what the opposite of what we do in this country. Um, but I think that the raise should come from the share that goes to bosses and uh, not from the government. But like the, the, and the, I the think fight that's... to raise minimum wage and the fight to end sub-minimum wage, they're, they're different fights. And they, they both are good.
generally the um, stance to take. And the tip economy itself is one not set up for the benefit of the workers. Um, so the tip economy was an invention of uh, post-slavery America as a way to get out of paying largely black workers a, a wage that was living. And so it's, it's pure patriarchal. It's a relic. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, I'm sure. That and even if we went to a, uh... A, a, a no sub minimum wage everybody's making minimum wage who's a tipped worker i would still personally tip a service worker as somebody that has worked non-service jobs and but also went to restaurants and experienced service work like that i have no problem tipping on top of that i think it's it's a noble thing to do but the employer should front the bill for their living wage there are certain areas of the country where um like favorite for instance las vegas um where you might be able to That's use right, that then. to divide the working class along policy lines like that but the overall em emphasis and why people are a little bit uh, resentful of that is that that system doesn't work for most people yeah yeah um, um it's not everyone is getting the giant las vegas tips from high rollers you that get, are, there's you people know, that get uh, like thousand dollar tips you know even more than that like the, the people get crazy with their tipping in las vegas uh, you know, four drinks in. Um, right. So we need to, what, what I think, and this is still a, a shift uh, in the political economy of the Democratic Party is we need to be doing these things through like minimum wages and yeah. um, uh, health benefits and things like that. Um, uh, and also, you know, forcing bosses to pay more of their employees more. Teacher Dan says, yes, uh, fight off lower wages for tip work. Thanks again you know, for explaining. Uh, yeah, I could uh, never. It's like, Ryan, I, I think it's the most cucked thing to argue against ending sub minimum wage and just being like, no, tips are the way. Tips are the way. Like, that's how I make my money is like based off the generosity of, of patrons, not like, oh, my employer actually paying me a living wage. It's, it's just cucked behavior for years and you only have to claim a certain amount it's best to claim everything so you have a be better credit emma is right get rid of sub minimum wage that's something i'd prefer look there's so much no flexibility reviews, at this yeah. point <laughs> this is was an ask seemingly but, uh, from like i said in the discord it's like you don't see the union workers in las vegas saying like oh no it's bad that we're making a full minimum wage and tips on top of it they're fighting now for more rights where they're like oh now we don't want uh taxes on our tips because that is something that the the culinary union in nevada is saying and th that's what they're talking about right now but they're not just saying no tax on tips they're before that they're saying end sub minimum wage and no tax on tips even though nevadans already experienced no sub minimum wage they are making minimum wage with tips they're still saying that needs to end everywhere and then they're also fighting for more rights. So that's how it should be. It's like you're constantly fighting for more rights, not like, oh, those rights aren't that big of a deal. In Nevada, and this is a cynical political move, I think, to try to get Nevada. And, and if you're going to do bad she's policy, she's trying to outflank. But yeah, to me, if you're going to do a bad policy, it's if if a union's asking for it, that's one of the better reasons to do it. Also, and I think good point. that the fact that she's coming out today by saying that there's going to be an income cap means this is flexible. Yeah. <laughs> she just wants to give into the union ask and then move in a direction where like there's a lot of ways that we can go in terms of yeah. uh, if the union's asking for it you know what okay but like i said i'm not of the mindset of trying to cut taxes i'm of the mindset of taxing the rich more and once we do that then maybe we can talk about like cutting taxes on the lower middle classes things like that but like i keep saying those taxes go towards funding social programs that money has to come from somewhere so the more we talk about cutting spending the more that these we're going to have to find money somewhere else and if not those those institutions are going to be underfunded and start to fail so i if we want to talk about no tax on tips if the rich are being taxed and all that okay we could talk about that and I'm not totally against it, but I just, I don't think we need to be talking about cutting taxes. I think we need to be talking about taxing the rich more and reallocating our taxes to going toward more uh, public services. Uh, tips. So I don't necessarily think this is like set. Uh, I think she was just trying to subvert what Trump was doing here um, in the way that like J.D. Vance said, oh, I'm for the child tax credit. Right. I'm for $5,000. And Me then she too. comes out and she goes, I'm for $6,000 in the first year. And we, but what's also 
important is that the Republicans are way more disingenuous about their claims, specifically on the child tax credit, because J.D. Vance missed the vote <laughs> for the last effort to expand the child tax Damn. credit. He just didn't show up. And then when it was a part of the negotiations that, you know, Manchin took a hatchet to, J.D. Vance was running for Congress and uh, running for Senate, I should say. And uh, so you can't find how he voted on that. But you can see how literally every Republican basically voted against it. Um, and every Democrat uh, or most Democrats besides Manchin and stuff were for it. So, um, you know, don't it's, it's a it's a way to kind of sideline the gimmicks that are not sincere <laughs> from the trump up, campaign Valvin? and i'm fine with that from an electoral politics standpoint yeah but like that doesn't mean the principle of we should be chasing who can lower taxes more uh is a good one exactly um, exactly like the idea that it's like uh, more money in working people's uh, pockets like there's other ways to do that um besides lowering the amount that they contribute to society yeah. exactly um so uh with that said, again, join the majority report.com. Matt, what's happening on Left Reckoning? Uh, All right. So that was that. I thought that was a very good segment. Just talk uh, further explaining and expanding upon things that we, we've been talking about for a long time. Um, Let's watch the speeches now. Let's get into that. 